So the one dollar. Okay, this is from our one from the early 50s. You've got Priest and Humphrey 35E. Now let's go on to the next. Oh, uh, now this is 35F and it, with uh, Priest and Anderson. And introduced alongside that is the 1957. Now there's a couple things that make it different. The verbiage there for this certificate is legal tender that hasn't changed. Neither has the, uh, this certifies that there is on deposit in the Treasury of the United States of America one dollar in silver payable to the bearer on demand. So all that stuff is the same. The series number is different. One difference, however, is that the picture of George Washington has changed in size. It's a different printing process. They have more uh, discs, uh, not discs, more uh, dollars, if you will, on a sheet of paper. So it's a larger sheet of paper. And they have, in the older one, it was a wet printing method where the paper would contract a little bit, making the, the image a bit smaller. Whereas this one's a dry printing, so it just comes straight out of the press. This size does not shrink. And as a result, they had to modify the design a little bit to keep the same pictures there. So if we look closely, we're backed off a little bit from him. You can see a little bit more of his front side than you do here. Uh, the oval's a little bit wider in his case, just to accommodate that his whole head is bigger and therefore also wider. And, um, well, it's just bigger. But they didn't move anything else around in that, so they managed to keep that. The other big change for series 1957 was the introduction of the expression here in God We Trust, which up to this point, no paper money for this country ever officially had. You know, other than I think there's an early case where something had a picture of a coin with that phrase on it, but that's all. Okay, now the next phrase over, next stage over, we now get into the uh, early 1960s. And now it's Elizabeth uh, Rudolph Smith and C. Douglas Dillon for this era. And so now we've moved up to 35G which you have two varieties of, I'll get to that in a moment, and 57 goes up to 57A. But the only other big change is they did something in the old series 35 that hadn't been done to any of the other older series. And that is, in God We Trust, got added to some of them, but not right away. So some of them don't have In God We Trust, like the ones before didn't, and some of them do have In God We Trust, just like the series 1957s always do. So that's kind of a nice thing to note. As we move into the next cycle, we've still got C. Douglas Dillon here as the Secretary of the Treasury. But on this side, we've got Catherine O'Hay Granahan. So this comes into a slightly later 1960s era. So now we have a 1935H, which I think holds the record for the highest uh, series letter to come after a series year is H. So that, that sets kind of a record. And 1957 B. Again, no further changes in front other than the series year and the signatures, except now the series H, all of them have in God we trust. So that's finally caught up. And of course the 57 still has that. In fact, they'll all have that from this point on out. And uh, also under the same signatures is introduced the uh, Federal Reserve Note. Now we should note that up until this point, the only product of the Federal Reserve to be less than $5, the $1 and $2, was the old large size Federal Reserve Bank Note. The regular Federal Reserve Note always started from $5 and went on up to $10,000 or at least as high as money goes. Now it goes up to 100, but at the various points that went up to $10,000, but it never descended below $5. as just the regular Federal Reserve note, whether the old large size or the bigger or the new smaller size, until the introduction of this $1 here, series 1963, which also has the new method of printing, meaning the larger image of Thomas Jefferson uh, you notice there's a little bit more of him. There's two things that have happened. Looks like the one that matters the most is that the bottom doesn't waste space. I'm talking about silver payable to the bearer on demand. 
It's also a little less jumbling up front because there's nothing about certifying about deposit on demand. It's just the United States of America. But that's probably about the same. Well, silver certificate there, that, that top scroller was a lot thicker. So it, it definitely does come higher on the note. And the bottom comes lower. So you actually get a lot more of him, even though he's bigger. It's barely noticeable. But it still has the wider oval than the... Uh, Original 1935H, which also has about the same amount of him, but it's it's really visibly smaller. So that's kind of neat. And of course, it has the same in God We Trust. Scroll work is, of course, completely redone. I mean, it just has almost nothing in common with uh, the new Federal Reserve note. It's really a new kind of money and all new scroll work. And uh, ah, different lathe work. See here, you still have the same thing, silver certificate, one dollar's half. Now I got a different one, a single loop, a double rounder loop, a single like that. Interesting. Okay. Well, the next stage, the silver certificates are no longer made, but the Federal Reserve note simply continues along. Actually, there's two kinds. There's the A with Henry Fowler. And then very briefly, and only the $1 has this, a 63B with Joseph Barr, the famous Barr note. But nothing else has changed. You still have the same old kind of seal. Oh, and the we note here that the $1 Federal Reserve note, and in fact it'll turn out all 1963 Federal Reserve notes, introduced these, you know, this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. So all that other verbiage about lawful money and the Federal Reserve Bank and the Treasury is just sliced out and nobody misses it. So that's another change. Another thing is there's nothing about will pay to the bearer on demand. So we're just treating it like it is actually a dollar instead of a piece of paper saying that this is good for a dollar, which is what the older verbiage really meant. So moving on from the series 63A and B, we now get to the 69. 69 is kind of distinctive because it introduces the new treasury seal. Now it's in English, the Department of the Treasury, 1789. The older one was you know, much harder to read and all, I don't know, a bunch of Latin anyway. So, and of course, all new um, treasurer and secretary of the treasurer. Well, 69 comes in something kind of intriguing. And that is the fact that uh, it has four series letters after that. The 69A, the 69B, the 69C, and the 69D. Now the 69A is probably the most unusual because the only difference was this lady here, Dorothy Andrew Elston, had got married and her now and decided to go by her married name. This was Elston was her maiden name. She now goes Dorothy Andrew Cabus. So, and Kennedy is just, David Kennedy is just here on both sides. So that's kind of interesting to see that this was done and a whole series created for that just because she got married and did her signature again for that. So that's kind of a, a neat thing. It's the only time anything like that ever happened. So it's the same person, just married or single. Of course, at this point, Cabus is still here, but now we've got Connolly. And then while Connolly continues, we get... Uh, Benuelos, and then while Benuelos is still here, Connolly gets replaced with George Schultz, and so on. And then we get to the final era, and from this point on, we will never see any series letter beyond A. So, but the era of Neff and Simon, 1974, or in one denomination, 1976, we'll get to that. There's no further changes, and now we're, we're completely boring. There's no more silver certificates. There's no more United States notes. There's no more about anything on that anything is on by the held by the Treasury, like uh, you know, such as silver or gold. That's all long, long gone. There's no uh, will pay to the bear. All that's gone. So that's where our one dollar ends.